Western Ghats support some of the most intact and extensive tropical evergreen forests in Asia. These forests are home to many endemic species, plants and animals found nowhere else in the world. The mountainous topography here has created islands of moist habitat that have acted as refugia for species over time as surrounding areas have grown drier, leading to the evolution of diverse and unique forms of life. Even within the Ghats, some of these endemic species have very restricted distributions, being found in only a handful of places. This makes them extremely vulnerable to extinction, as the changes wrought by economic development lead to conversion and alteration of natural habitats. With support from CEPF and ATRI, civil society groups throughout the Western Ghats have been working to document the status of these endemic species, understand the threats facing them and use this information to ensure their conservation. Miristika swamps are very unique forest types of the Western Ghats, uh, where you have this dominance of a particular family, which is an ethnic family called the Miristikesi. For a student of botany, uh, Miristika swamps are some kind of a live museum or in a relief forest, basically because there is a very intricate uh, relationship between the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. Frogs are the most important endemic uh, wildlife that are associated with the Miristika swamps. About 60% of the species that are found in this uh, Miristika swamps are endemic to the Western Ghats. The species that are endemic to this habitat have originated extremely long back in the evolutionary scale. Swamps are extremely important to the ecosystem. Basically, they act as a drain of the Western Ghats. In fact, all our perennial water sources like the rivers are fed by these swamps. In the Western Ghats, you have the freshwater swamps feeding the entire village, both for the drinking purpose as well as for the irrigation purpose. So once you have a uh, productive land, people tend to come and occupy and extend their agriculture. Vistika swamps occur as a network. But once we have the agriculture in between two swamps, the water will not go to the downstream and thereby parching the entire stretch of the Miristika swamp downstream. So perhaps this is one of the biggest problems that is facing the Miristika swamps. Once these Miristika swamps are separated from one another, they become fragmented. This fragmentation has a multitude of uh, influence on wildlife too. Basically because the canopy is cut off, the canopy animals cannot move so quickly, the frogs cannot exchange the genetic uh, material from one swamp to another swamp. So the whole lot of uh, cascading effect is there because of the fragmentation of the Meristica swamps. Firstly, we wanted to know where all these swamps occur. What is the status of them in terms of their diversity? What is the status in terms of their connectivity? After that, we focused on some of the degraded uh, Miristika swamps and then how they can be brought back to the original swamp conditions through restoration activity. Restoration of a swamp species requires to understand the biology of the endemic tree species. Secondly, we need to understand how they can be grown in the nursery. We wanted to have a participatory role of the people so that they also are a part of the conservation and restoration activity. We established these village forest communities as well as the swamp restoration committees within these villages so that there is an active participation of the villagers for this project. The most important outcome has been to demonstrate the degraded swamps can be now restored through active plantation of the unique species that are there in the swamp. The swamps that are downstream the degraded ones have been greatly benefited in terms of the water flow, in terms of the life forms that they support. We realized that there must be some kind of a legal protection that should be extended to 
the Maristika Swamps. Perhaps for the first time, because of the lobbying of our project, Karnataka Forest Department has come out with the declaration of the uh, conservation reserves, which involve Maristika Swamps. The grant from CEPA was uh, very important for us to augment the ongoing activities of the colleges, ongoing activities of the forest department. And uh, basically, they gave us a framework of combining a department, an education institute, and uh, involvement of uh, villagers on a participatory model. The CPF framework brought many players on a one platform where the conservation activities can actually take off nicely. The freshwater fish diversity in the northern western Ghat is actually very rich and most of the freshwater fish diversity or we can say the hidden freshwater diversity is quite underestimated. For this CPA factory project, basically for the fish project, I am looking for the freshwater fishes and we are exploring the almost all freshwater habitats from the primary streams to the secondary streams and till the main river channels. The rivers of the northern western Ghats, there are lots of studies, but most of these studies, they are focused on the east flowing rivers. There is no data on this uh, west flowing rivers and these are very small rivers. So may not be the major attention for the researchers. They are relatively less explored and that's why they are looking for this region as a conservation priority. The major threat is the habitat degradation and there are many reasons for the habitat degradation. For example, mining, quarrying, then the pollution and uh, the mega dam constructions for the hydroelectric power plants. Without proper taxonomic study, we can't actually put up the conservation strategies for any group of the fauna or the flora. If we have the primary data and uh, distribution range of the particular species, how many widespread species are there, how many really endemic and threatened species are there, we can set up the conservation priorities for the freshwater species major objective of our project to fill the gaps in between the knowledge of the freshwater fish diversity from this region to report the whatever extant freshwater fish fauna we have in this region by using the all integrated taxonomic approaches. The second objective of this project is prioritize the areas for freshwater fish conservation. But there are some scheduled tribes in the Raigad district. The Katkari community is mostly depend on the freshwater fish resources from this region. They usually fish in the rivers. They don't fish in the other habitats like the marine habitats or in the estuarine habitats. They mostly depend on the freshwater fishes, basically for their own consumption. So this project focuses on the Katkari community, to involve the Katkari community in the project activities and to utilize their local knowledge and to give them uh, the scientific knowledge about the fish diversity and why it is important and why should we conserve our freshwater resources. We interact with the local tribal communities who have the rights in this region for the freshwater resources. We involve them in the project activities and we are using the local tribal fishing nets and the tribal fishing gear to access some highly inaccessible habitats in this region. There are certain species which we can't identify on the field. So in that case, we have collected some of the species and we have preserved them for all the genetic study as well as for morphological study. And we have transferred them to the laboratory. And the remaining catch, we release them into their natural habitat. In this project, we have described the lots of new species, but this project has also helped us to estimate the range of the distribution for the particular fish species. To focus the long-term conservation efforts, we have selected some of the species which needs really the conservation priorities. There are some endangered fish species like the recently described citron bark. Some of the fish species and their habitats we have selected as a critical freshwater fish species and the critical habitats. And we are planning to focus the further conservation efforts on this particular kind of species. The CPF factory grant has helped us to establish the local framework for implementing the ground conservation measures in this region. This project has also helped the local communities by giving them the education regarding the conservation of the freshwater resources. To protect the freshwater resources, basically, or to protect the livelihood of the local people, the freshwater fish conservation is really needed. And the number of the species what we have in the Western Ghats or in the pockets of the Western Ghats can reflect 
the health of the rivers or the health of the freshwater habitats in this region. Therefore, the conservation of the freshwater fish resources is really needed in this region. The Western Ghats have been a refuge for biodiversity through millions of years of geological history, enabling species adapted to moist conditions to survive past episodes of global climate change and generating the incredible diversity of life forms that amaze and intrigue us today. By generating new information on endemic species, especially ones from lesser known groups, and by demonstrating effective models to conserve them, CEPF grantees are helping to ensure that the Ghats remain a refuge for biodiversity. These efforts will help the Western Ghats to retain healthy ecosystems that are resilient to the impacts of climate change and able to support healthy and productive human societies.